Let's go to Elizabeth in Newport, Oregon. Hey, Elizabeth, what's going on? Uh, hi, Dr. Deloney. Uh, it's an honor to talk to you. It is more of an honor to talk to you, I promise. How's it going? Oh, it's it's going better than it, I deserve. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So what's up? How can I help? Okay. Um, so, sheesh, this gets pretty complicated. Okay. Um, so I'll uh, just kind of start with my questions. Um, I'm uh, dealing with quite a bit of regret following um, a divorce, um, and I'm also having issues um, dealing with, now that I am divorced, um, the thought of having children. I basically got a second chance to have children if I wanted them. Um, so that's, yeah. So, so how long have you been divorced? Um, less, less than a year. Okay. Why'd you get divorced? Uh, well, some brief context. Um, I'm a longtime Ramsey listener. Um, I'm debt free. And, uh, this is basically uh, the, a whole year of gazelle intensity, like all coming in at once, all mm-hmm. coming down at once. Um, basically starting in 2019, my mother and brother both passed away, um, oh, both from, uh, mental illness and addiction. And right in the middle of that is when my divorce was going down. Hmm. Um, what, so, what precipitated that divorce? Somebody cheat on somebody? You all just said you just didn't like oh, each other anymore? What was it? Oh, God, it was a mess. See, I guess the, the biggest thing with the divorce was like, I mean, we, we'd gone through a bunch of things and then... Oh, I know, like, but what was it? What was it? What was it? You've got like, a, there's like two things. What are they? Um, uh, well, I would say the biggest issue was probably like my severe body dysmorphia. Okay. Um, and then just our, just our inability, like we did everything wrong, basically. All, all, everything that, you know, Dave Ramsey talks, I mean, you guys talk about it too. Like we moved in together before we were married. We got a house before we were married. We had debt. Like we didn't combine finances. Like it was all, and I went head to head with my in-laws a bunch of times, which was stupid. Like I learned a lot of lessons. Like So there was just a lot of pressure on this relationship early on. And then in the middle of it's oh, yeah. a lot of grief. And if yeah. you grow up in a home where you've got a mother with, with mental health challenges and your brother's got mental health challenges and there's addiction, then, um, you may have picked up some different pictures and different models that weren't healthy and, um, not to mention whatever genetic components and all that stuff, whatever abuse and stuff you suffered. And so there was a lot of pressure on this thing and you said, I need to take a break. Is that right? Or I'm out. Or he yeah, said, I'm out. Not. We both, I mean, we both did. Like, he basically, when we were talking about divorce, like, he offered to reconcile, and I just said no. And then a couple months into that, the separation, I tried to reconcile twice, and he said no. So then we, like, just went through with it. And then I sold my house, paid off my debt, bought a van, moved across the country, like, literally to the West Coast from New York, mm-hmm. uh, and lived in the van off grid for four months. I've been living off grid for four months in a van. Down, like by, down by a know. river? Please say yes. Please say yes. Literally. Literally. Really? That's fantastic. <laughs> literally down by a river. I Elizabeth, river. yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to start calling you Matt thanks. Foley. All right. So um, there's an old saying in counseling, which is the tyranny of accomplishing all of your dreams. <laughs> right? Um, and you're not accomplishing all of your dreams, but... Kind of. One of the worst things that happens when we make major life changes, whether that's taking a new job, um, cheating on our spouses with somebody who finally is acknowledging that that we're good looking or that we're lovable or that they make us feel sexy again, or moving across the country in a van down by a river, whatever the thing is, paying off all of your debts, whatever the thing is, what catches millions of people off guard is that when you reach these new milestones – you go with you yeah. and you experienced deep tragedy. And if you grew up in the house of an addict or somebody with mental health challenges, you also grew up not liking your mom sometimes, probably hating your mom sometimes. And then you have to reconcile that with the grief you feel because your mom died. And then you've got that guilt on top of you and then your brother and all those things. And I should have, and I could have, and here we are in this grief. And now my in-laws are idiots and my husband and I, are just stumbling through this thing, right? And I'm just going to run. And the problem is 
you showed up in that van down by the river on the West Coast, right? Yeah. And he came with me in my brain. Like, yeah. I, like, all of this regret is basically, because I do a lot of dream recording. I pay attention to my dreams, and, like, I get these just invasive, persistent dreams about marriage. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's almost brought me to the point where I reached out to him to see, you know, to try again. But, like, who wants that phone call? Like, I don't want to be, you know, the ex that calls you back. Like, I, I just don't feel that would be appropriate. Like, we had as many reasons to to continue the divorce as to stay together. Like, there were so many things. And, like, now I, yeah, that— I don't, See, I don't buy that. I, okay. Y'all chose to get divorced. And when it comes to reasons and things—I mean, I just seen couples work through the most insane things. And so okay. you can point to it's because of this, it's because of this, it's because of this. But at the end of the day, it was because you don't want to be with that person anymore. And so it's like, well, uh, it's not like a teeter totter or like a scale where you're like, well, there's this many reasons to stay and this many reasons to leave. No, you just left and he left. And so it sounds to me like you are desperately, painfully, and probably pathologically lonely. And you are exhausted. Definitely that one. And you are scared. And you are completely and totally alone. And. You may have gotten divorced because you were in the middle of a hurricane and you just left home. Like, I got to get out of here. And yeah. now that the hurricane has passed and you're coming, you're interested in going back and see if your home's still standing. All that stuff's, I mean, that you're not crazy and you're not wrong. And who wants that phone call? He may desperately be dreaming of that phone call. Or you may be making that phone call um, because you're desperate. Either way, what I would tell you is in this moment in history, be true to yourself. And if you miss him, call him and say, I miss you. If it wasn't abusive, if it wasn't violent, if it wasn't those things that um, where you are codependent and um, you know what I mean? It sounds like y'all left on weird terms, like you still love the guy and he still loves you. And y'all just found yourself on a train moving west and you just didn't get off. And some of that's- I mean, so, this, I mean, it's true, but like so much, because I've basically been doing so much research on marriage and family and everything in the last year. And like, if I knew then what I know now about marriage, how my opinions about marriage have changed, like I would have tried way harder. Call him. Um, and some of this may be grief. Some of this may be guilt. Some of it may be regret. And it may be less connected to him and more connected to you. It sure could be. Like hey. this other this other question that I struggle so much with with this whole divorce is like we were hundred percent on the same page, hundred percent on the same page about not having children, and like that sort of changed for me now a little. So I got this like whole opportunity to like have kids again if I wanted, but my I come from a family of like borderline personality disorder, agoraphobia, obesity, like opiate addiction, alcoholism, and like I am like. I, I'm afraid to like. How does a person know if they're too crazy to have children? Like, is that a like? I don't. That's that's what I struggle with a lot too. Because I'm 36. Like, I could easily have another relationship. And like, are you too crazy to have children? I would love to find out. <laughs> 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 but like, I'm. I, I just. It, it seems so easy to screw up children. Like. One of the best ways you can, one of the best ways you can love and honor children, is by first loving and honoring yourself. Okay. And by being well. And by doing the work to be well. What you've done over the last year is you ran, and I'm not going to say running in your situation wasn't the right thing. Mm-hmm. You have not dealt at all with Elizabeth. You've read some books. Mm-hmm. You have got some new information, you've thought about a lot of things, and you're literally in a van down by a river. Mm -hmm. What you haven't done is learn how to be in relationship. And new information is helpful. It's really helpful. But it won't heal you. It just helps you. It's like a GPS system. It helps you find the right road, but you got to walk that road. And that is relationship. And what you don't have a model for in your family history 
is how to do relationship, how to be at peace, how to be well. For sure. And you've got a lot of childhood trauma is my guess. You've got a lot of adult yep. trauma is my guess. Turns out. Yeah. And that's okay. Your past is not going to determine your future if you don't want it to. Is it going to be hard? Oh, my gosh, yes. Are you going to have to work really hard to get new models and to get new relationships and to practice living healthy, a healthy life in a way that you've never even seen done before? Yeah, you are. And by the way, you're allowed to make wild, intense proclamations when you're 28 and change your mind when you're 29. That happens. I'm never having kids. <laughs> That's what it was, basically. Yeah, and then you hold your first kid with your your buddy has a kid, and you go, oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Or I'm never moving to that town because that town's too, and I live in that town. Um, I love the way Esther Perel says it. She says, most adults will have three or four deep loves in their lifetime, and if they work really, really hard, it'll be with the same person. In person, yeah. Right. I'm actually a fan of hers. Yes, I've heard that. And so what you what happened is y'all y'all stop working at it. Yeah. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to immediately, today, reach out to somebody, whether that's a counselor, whether that's at betterhelp.com slash Deloney, whether that's a local pastor, whether that's a mentor or a friend. And I want you to say the words I need to learn how to be in relationship with somebody. Okay. And if you miss your ex-husband, call him. <laughs> You're 2,500 miles apart or 6,000 or wherever. I don't know where y'all are. You're way far apart from each other. And the worst he can say is, I don't want to talk to you. I've moved on. I'm married to somebody else. All of that relationship is a risk. But what you're doing is you're making yourself a little bit bonkers with the unknown. Am I too crazy to have a kid? Should I have gotten divorced? But just move forward with healing. Just move forward with, hey, how are you, man? How's it going? I miss you. Just want you to know. And he may say, <laughs> you're bananas. Or he may say, I've been waiting for this phone call for however many months. And it's probably, honestly, it's probably... Um, I don't, I don't even want to guess. I don't even want to guess. You had so much trauma in 2019, and you had so much trauma leading up to 2019, and then we've had 2020 and 2021, and you had a divorce in the middle of that and unsupportive in-laws and your own mental health challenges and your own addiction challenges. I don't. There's so much going on. A lot, yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm going to – I know the, uh, the, the internet warriors are going to be mad at me. I'm going to tell you to, to pause for a second before you call them. I want you to call a counselor first and sit down and talk to somebody Okay. for the first time. And I want you yeah. to, if you can at all, stop living in a van down by a river, go get an apartment and get a full-time job and work real hard and start reconnecting with people. Start reconnecting with human beings and be in a relationship with them. And this is going to be hard. And if you can get with a counselor who will walk through this with you or a great mentor that you trust and someone who's going to hold you accountable and call you on your crap and isn't going to let you just be like, yeah, you go, girl. No, that's going to say, that, uh-uh, that's not how we talk to people. And it may be that you end up in a medical doctor's office to get some medical care and to get a team of people who can help. And by the way, this is expensive and I know that. I'm not pie in the sky. Someone's listening to this saying, I don't have that kind of money. I get that. It's hard. There are resources out there for you if you want to, if you want that healing. And they are hard to find. Um, but I'll tell you this, Elizabeth, and I'll tell you to everybody else listening, you're worth finding those things. To answer the question, am I too crazy to have a baby? I can't answer that. I can't answer that. Um, I've seen people become extraordinary and remarkable and powerful when they are holding kids. And I've seen really brilliant, wonderful people have kids and they just regress and become four-year-olds themselves. And so that question is hard. And so I'm never going to just make a blanket statement like that. I will tell you, you're worth healing. And you're worth s staring down that generation. Terry Real calls it a forest fire of dysfunction that has raged through your family for generations now. 
And somebody has to have the courage to turn and face that forest fire and say, it stops with me. And Elizabeth, that could be you. That can be you. And it will be hard. And the goal here is if you do have kids that their road is easier to walk than yours is because you're saying no more. And if you don't have kids, you're still worth it. You're still worth it. And if you made a mistake, call them. After you've done some relational work and you've got a chance to breathe and you're not sleeping in a van, call them. Say, hey, I miss you. But that's for, that's for down the road a little bit. Down the road. I love it when, when in my life when I look in the mirror and say, I was wrong. I need to go fix that. I love that. I love that. Every, what's the old uh, meditation thing? Every moment is a chance to, every time I have a breath, whew, I have a chance to say, I'm going to start over. And I'm going to start over. And I'm going to start over. I'm proud of you for making the call, Elizabeth. Now I'm going to be really proud of you because it's time for you to be courageous and go do the hard healing stuff. 